Guys, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at this new uh, video transmitter that just came out from eShane. It's the ET526, and what's cool about this is that it has audio and it has uh, multi power switching. So, what does that mean? Um, it'll switch between 25 milliwatts, 200 milliwatts, and 600 milliwatts. So, uh, let's see here. Where is. Uh... Yeah, here we go. So, here are the um, features here, and it's 40 channels and. Uh, there you go, there's the uh, power switching between the three different powers and you got a 7 to 28 volt voltage range and uh, let me just show you what you get, you get the little instructions of course and uh, frequency chart in the back and some instructions on what the buttons do, we'll go over that in a second um, one thing to note that is different about this e machine versus a lot of the other e machines is that this antenna is an, is an SMA antenna. It's not an RPSMA. So if you have a lot of other Eosheen uh, products that have the RPSMA antennas, you'll need to um, get a Cloverleaf um, SMA antenna if you uh, want to not use the uh, linear antenna. So something to be aware of. So you get the antenna, the instructions, the transmitter itself, and you get this cable. And it uh, does not come with this camera. This is just an Eosheen camera that happens to uh, fit the connector here and they did that to make it backwards compatible with a previous generation of Eosheen cameras to reuse those so you get this cable and that powers the camera and gets the video and then you get this uh, other side of this cable here that goes over here and you get this weird connector where you get power and uh, this thing that's supposed to be for PWM and I'm not really sure how that works and thinking you probably plug it into your receiver and then you can maybe control the, um, the power setting from 25 to 600 milliwatts on a switch that's what I'm, that's my guess I'm not 100% sure on that because there's a there's no real documentation here on how to do that via PWM it just says here that touch switch PWM so either and it says your channel selection so it could be either channel selection or power switching I don't know uh, no instructions on that and um, so what I did here is I just have a little uh, power connector I'm gonna power this on and show you what the, the video looks like okay oh Make sure we got our antenna plugged in so one thing that you need to be aware of here is even though I've powered it on and we have little lights here it's actually not transmitting any video so I'll power on my monitor here and I'm tuned into um, Fat Shark 7 5860 and there's no video and uh, this actually threw me for a loop here when I was playing around with it I looked at this chart and I thought maybe the chart was wrong because I wasn't getting any video there's, um, as you can see, there's the lights there. The, the top lights are for your bands, A through E. And A is lit. And the bottoms are your, the green lights are your channels, well, 1 through 8. Um, these three lights here are for your power. So it's right now 25 milliwatts. If it's 200 milliwatts, it'll go to the second one, and 600 will be the uh, third one. But I was looking at this chart A7, 5860. And I was getting a video. And then. Uh, I realized that that this one when you plug it into power it's actually by default not transmitting any video and the actual the video transmitter itself is turned off even though the little LEDs are on so that that kind of tricked me because I thought that it was actually powered on because the lights were on but it was that was not the case in order to power it on you take this top button you double click it and then you get video so now it's actually turned on for, for real. And you can see here that the red light is actually lit up a little bit stronger than before. So I'll turn it off. You double click to turn it off again. And you can see it's just sort of a, a dim glow. And now it's uh, turned off. So to switch your power, so if I want to go from 25 milliwatts to uh, 200 milliwatts, then you just press that switch for three seconds. So let me uh, do that. I'll demonstrate that. So we'll turn back on. 
and then I'll hold this button for three seconds. And now both lights are turned on. So over here it says um, LEDs one or one is for 25 milliwatts, two is for 200 milliwatts. But I was thinking it would just be the middle light that would be on, but apparently it's both lights that are going to be on. And I'm assuming that if we do this again, we go to 600 milliwatts, that all three lights will be on. So let's test that. There we go. And now we're transmitting at 600 milliwatts. All three lights are on. I'm going to reduce this back to 25 milliwatts before I burn my hand off. It's getting hot already. There we go. Okay. And uh, the bottom button is for uh, selecting your frequency in bands. Uh, so one second, it will change the frequency within the band. If you press it for two seconds, it'll change the band. And then if you press it for five seconds, it'll actually turn the microphone on and off. So let's demonstrate that here. We'll um, go through the frequencies in the band. And so we'll just click really quickly. It should be channel eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And we're back. And if we hold it for two seconds, it'll change our band. And then we're in band B. Band C, D, E, and we're back to A. And we're back, we got a video again. So that's pretty much how you use it. It's uh, pretty simple once you figure out that you have to actually turn it on by double clicking. Uh, one of the, I think that's one of the good things about this is that you can turn it on and off because uh, that's, a, that's a feature that I like, but I'm not so keen on the double clicking of the button. Um, obviously, just pressing it once isn't going to cause the uh, thing to turn off inadvertently, which is good. Um, but then again, you have to sort of place the transmitter somewhere on your craft where this button is easily accessible and you can double click it easily. So. It would have, I think it would have been better if it were on the side, perhaps. And uh, we'll have to see. Hopefully, I can put this on a craft where there's like a, a cutout in like one of the top plates where I can just easily get to that button. Otherwise, it's going to be challenging to turn this on and off because you're plugging battery power to your quad, and uh, this is actually not on yet without actually doing that uh, that procedure. Anyway, I'll have some more videos on this pretty soon. Some demos. I'm pretty sure this is going to be uh, just as good as all the uh, ET200s that I have. I have a bunch of those and they've all been pretty rock solid. Uh, looks like they've just sort of made this into a generation 2 and added a bunch of features and it look, looks about the same size and everything so I expect it to work pretty well. Anyway guys, hope you liked this video and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.